Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the ALCS here in the Nashville Stars franchise. The Stars have another chance to get back to the World Series as we are defending champs. And we play, this time we play the White Sox in the ALCS. They have already actually took home a World Series in this series. They are the only other AL team to win a championship. The Dodgers have won twice. The White Sox have won once. Here are the starting lineups. If there's one guy in their lineup, I fear it's their leadoff hitter, Max Clark. He has now developed well enough to be at the MLB level, and he is a stud playing in left field. They also signed Mike Soroka in the offseason, along with Pete Alonzo last offseason. And we will get through the first four games of this ALCS today. Max Clark is hitting 429 here in the playoffs. He was an all-star starter as well. He gets a pitch over the middle and hits a rocket. Pass shortstop, and that's what I'm talking about. The kid can just rake. He hits one all the way to the center field wall, and he's got a lead-off double off of Bradley McDougal, who gets the game one start today. We decided, decided to go with Bradley McDougal because I want to set up a Troy Quincy appearance and give him a little rest, so McDougal is the next best thing. Here's a ground ball to Devers, and a throw to first base will be offline. Nashville off to a rocky start so far. Luis Robert at the play. He hits a weak fly ball to right field. Dom Thompson-Williams on the run, and Clark will stay at second base. A good throw by DTW. Here is Pete Alonzo hitting 368 in the playoffs. We all know he's got the home run power. And here a 1-2 pitch will be hit deep to left center field. This one, though, We'll just die in the air. It looked farther than what it was off of the bat. Enrique Bradfield with the throw into third. Gavin Sheets hitting fifth here for the White Sox. 3-2 pitch with two outs. And McDougal will get out of this first inning after a leadoff double from Max Clark with no run surrendered. An excellent start there for McDougal recovering after an error as well. Here is Enrique Bradfield leading off this game. He grounds out to short, and that one will be an easy throw to first base. Kerry Doss coming off of a huge ALDS as he swings and misses at the sinker. He just got fooled on that one. Bringing up Rafael Devers, who also had a huge ALDS, hitting 429 so far in the playoffs. Hits one hard to the right side, and that one will be an easy throw to first. So neither team going to get a run in the first couple of innings and move on to the top of the third inning. Max Clark back at the plate now, one for one, and he hits one deep to left center field. McDougal misses his spot and leaves one right over the middle. 434 to center field, Max Clark makes it a one nothing ball game. And that power right there is the reason why he is the bad I fear in this lineup. One nothing here. At least he hits leadoff, so he won't be able to drive in too many runs unless the bottom of the order gets on base. Four strikeouts so far through three, and this one is going to be Pete Alonso at the plate. Hits one deep to center field. This one isn't coming back either. The two big bats I talked about in the pregame are the two bats that score the first runs of the game. Pete Alonzo signed with the White Sox with a three-year deal, and he makes it 2 nothing. Gavin Sheets comes to the plate now, and he hits one hard to left field, and that one will be right to, to uh, Dante Wild, as that brings him up to the plate now. Hitting 286 in the playoffs. He hits one well to left center. That one will get to the wall, and Dante Wild is thinking three, and he will make it. A leadoff triple here for the Nashville Stars here in the third inning, as that brings up Kurt Zimbrano, hitting 286 on the year, and that's really all he had to do. Hit one to the right side, and it's now two to one. We cut that lead in half. Jimmy Sandoval is actually struggling so far, but I think right now he's our best option at second base here. 
but he does draw a walk. He does his job here at the bottom of the lineup, bringing up Enrique Bradfield. He hits one to left field. That one will be run down. Max Clark covers a lot of a lot of ground out in left field. He is a good defensive outfielder. As that brings up Kerry Doss, and he gets fooled on the changeup, and that one will be strike three here for the Nashville Stars. Now on to the top of the fourth inning. McDougal still on the mound, obviously, for the Nashville Stars. He gives off a leadoff single here to start the fourth inning. Andrew Benintendi hits one high to left field. That one will be an easy out for Wild in left field. As that brings up Scott Kingery now with one out. Man on first base. This is a ground ball to second. Devers the second. On to first. It's a double play. An easy one there. McDougal through five, four innings and only given up two runs so far. That brings up Carson Kelly, who goes opposite field. This one will carry over the wall in right field. All three runs for the White Sox have been homers, and that one makes it a 3-1 ball game. McDougal hasn't been pitching too bad, but just three home runs. Will it be four? Luis Robert comes to the plate. It hits one off of the right field wall. You got to think about pulling him here. He's at 88 pitches right now, but two outs here in this fifth inning. He's going to face Pete Alonso again, and he leaves one over the middle of the plate. This is a fly ball in foul territory, and McDougal gets lucky. That one was almost gone. Carson Kelly makes it a 3-1 game. Bottom of the fifth inning now. Soroka still on the mound here for the White Sox. He's only at 67 pitches. That brings up Kurt Zimbrano, the former White Sox. Remember, we acquired Kurt Zimbrano back in season two from the White Sox. That one will be ball four. Jimmy Sandoval at the plate has an opportunity to come through big. This one's a low sinker. And he watches that one for strike three. It will bring up the top of the lineup here. Enrique Bradfield is 0 for 2 today. I decide to go with the more clutch player in this situation in Taylor Trammell. He's hitting 286 to playoff, slugging over 1,000. He gets a 3-2 pitch low. Hits one hard to the left side. It's bobbled, but thrown onto first on a line, and it will get Trammell at first base. Moncada does recover. Kendrick Franklin Cole back at the plate now here in the seventh inning, and he goes to right field. He's just turned into such a great hitter now. Good sign for things to come as now it looks like the manager will come out and bring in Devin Williams, who also signed with the White Sox. You can see why this is a championship contender. They have signed a lot of guys, including one of the best relief pitchers in baseball and Devin Williams. Willie Adame as he takes one to right field versus his former teammate. And that one will be a single. So guys on first and second with no outs. This is a good situation here. We got Dante Wild, who's a very good hitter at the plate. And he just gets up in front of that one. And it's low in the zone. Devin Williams gets the first strikeout of his outing. Kurt Sobrano to the plate now. He just hits a soft ground ball to the right side. And with 19 speed, he will never beat that out. It's a double play. Bottom of the eighth inning. They bring in Ronaldo Lopez out of the bullpen, and he has one low. And that one looked like it was in the zone, but it will be called ball four. Taylor Trammell up to the plate now. He turns on one. This one's going to be foul, but will it get out of the park? And it won't but it will be deep enough to at least move Jimmy Sandoval over to second base as that brings up Kerry Doss, and he goes the opposite field. That one sneaks through the infield. Sandoval will hold up at third, but hopefully we don't get a ground ball in this situation as that's going to bring up one of our best hitters, Rafael Devers, three-time runner-up for the MVP, I guess third runner-up, and that one will be a deep fly ball. This one will be gone. Rafael Devers makes it a 4-3 ball game in the bottom of the eighth inning. Wow. You cannot be more clutch than Rafael Devers has been in this series. Last series, we saw in the final game, Devers came through 
And now we're seeing it again in the clutch. I mean, just crazy production we've seen out of Devers in this series. He's one of those guys that in MLB The Show, he's just an incredible player to have. Dom Thompson Williams walks, and that will bring up KFC, who goes up the middle, and that one will be his second single of the day. Willie Adama is one for three. He goes the opposite field and gets his second hit of the day. That one should be scoring the run from second, and it will. KFC tries to go to third, and he gets thrown out. But the runner will come across the plate. It's now a 5-3 to three ball game off of a four-run eighth inning. Dante Wild comes to the plate and will fly out to Max Clark in left. And now we move to the top of the ninth inning. Pablo Moya. His only outing in this playoff so far, he actually got hit very well, but ended up getting the save anyway with the four-run cushion. But now he faces a different team here in the top of the ninth inning. That one will be a fly ball to center. Bringing up Yohan Moncada, who hits another fly ball to center. And we got two outs in this inning, fellas. One more out here. And we will take game one here at home in front of our home crowd. Pablo Moya facing Andrew Benintendi in three straight flyouts. We'll end this one. How about the Nashville Stars in the eighth inning? Coming back in our final frame of hitting and coming up clutch. And we get the victory. Five to three. Wow, look at that box score. I mean, we could not do anything for about six straight innings, and all of a sudden we exploded and end up winning this game. Incredible, incredible comeback and a good start to this ALCS. Now in game two, I do want to go with Jack Ladder. I said I wanted to use Troy Quincy uh, probably a game three and probably save him for a potential game seven. And I don't feel the need to actually use a lot of our starters in multiple games. I think last year we had to, had to because Madison Bumgarner was absolutely the best pitcher on our squad. But you can see here in game two, we're up three to one off of back-to-back -back home runs from Kerry Dawson and Rafael Devers. So now on to the fifth frame here. Max Clark has a single, and we do get out of that inning as well. So it's a three to one ball game, and now we have bases loaded here in the fifth. A strikeout, and we don't end up with any runs that inning. It was bases loaded with one out. Well, now here we are, now a three to two ball game. Jack Ladder is getting a little tired. He's got eight strikeouts, but we'll see what he can do here. And he does go, we do go to the bullpen and bring in Joel Pyomps, and he does get us out of that inning. Pyomps, we will remain in the game. We will keep in the game, I should say. He does get us out of the seventh inning as well. But a two-run home run by Dom Thompson-Williams will give us a couple of runs of cushion. And then we end up scoring another run off of an RBI single from Kerry Doss. On to the ninth. And Joel Pyomps goes three innings to end the game. And we end up winning. Kerry Doss with a home run, two RBIs, actually two doubles in that game. And we will take game number two. On to game three. For now, we are in Chicago on the south side, and we will face Zach Gallen. And this is the game we will put Troy Quincy on the mound. I don't think we've had to use him so far. We have the 2 nothing lead here. We could potentially go up 3 nothing and go for the sweep here in this episode. Anything can happen. As here is uh, Dante Wild, who's going to hit leadoff today. Just switching up the lineup a little bit. I love when Wild hits at that leadoff spot because he hits for extra base hits really, really well. Here is Rafael Devers, who is on fire here in the playoffs. And he comes up to the plate and hits one well. Deep to right field. That's gone. Rafael Devers, I mean, what else can you say about the guy? $300 million, it's all paying off. As now we're up to nothing already in the first inning. Dom Thompson Williams, he hits one hard up the middle, and we're still going here in the first inning. And I never really gave up on Dom Thompson Williams. Yes, he's had a down year, but I still believe in him. KFC hitting 333 at the plate, a little behind that pitch. They said it was good timing, but it will just be a fly out to Robert in center field, two outs. 
Willie Adam has moved down into the lineup a little bit this year, down to the sixth spot, hitting 292. He gets an excellent pitch to hit, and it looks like he had good timing on that, that one, but maybe just a little bit behind, and he will just fly out to center field. Max Clark to the plate now to face Troy Quincy in his first outing, and that one will be a low changeup, and we will walk Max Clark. I, I do want to pitch around him every time he gets to the plate. Next batter comes up. This is going to be a deep fly ball to left field. Taylor Trammell actually playing this game in center field. Dante Wilde is going to be in left, and he will run that one down. Luis Robert to the plate now in that three spot. Kirk Zambrano throws the second, but Max Clark with an excellent jump. We'll get the stolen bag here. Robert continues his at-bat now. Ground ball to the right side, and that one will be stepped on first by Kerry Doss. Bring it up two outs. Pete Alonzo to the plate. He hits one well up the middle, and that one will be enough to score Max Clark. And it looks like Pete Alonzo is thinking two on this play. Thrown out by Trammell. Two to one ball game here in the first inning. As we move on to this second inning now, Taylor Trammell back at the plate, and he will walk. Taylor Trammell is so good at drawing walks. It's either like, either like a home run, an extra base hit, or a walk. Jimmy Sandoval up to the plate now. This one probably will be two. Flip to second, and it looked like they maybe could have had two if he would have tagged the runner, but the runner is safe at first. Dante Wild to the plate now. 3-2 pitch. That one is going to be low. So now we have men on first and second with Kerry Doss coming to the plate. This is a ideal situation for Doss. He hits very well, runners on second. This one's hit well to the right center, and it will get down. That's going to get all the way to the wall. Jimmy Sandoval will attempt to score from first base, and he will. It's a 4-1 to one ball game. Kerry Doss comes through. We saw to end the ALDS. He had a couple of string of games where he was hitting the ball extremely well. And he continues here with the two RBI, two run RBI double. As now it's four to one, bringing up Devers to the plate, and he gets fooled on that one. A four to one ball game. So we have our ace on the mound versus their number three, pretty much. As that brings up that brings up Carson Kelly to the plate, and he will go to opposite field and have a hit down the right field line away from the shift. So Andrew Benintendi comes to the plate now with one out, ground ball up the middle. That one somehow gets past Quincy. It was just a chopper up the middle. And now they have runners on the corners with Scott Kingery coming to the plate. A three-run home run will tie this ball game up, and Kingery gets fooled on the outside changeup. That one was in the zone. And you know who comes up next? Max Clark, and I don't want any part of him. I decide to walk him and move on to Matthew Swift, who's hitting below 100, and he comes up clutch in this situation. Ground ball up the middle gets through. The throw home will not be in time for Benintendi, and it's now a 4-3 to three ball game. So a guy that was hitting below 100, was slugging below six, uh, was had an OPS below 600, Comes through in a clutch situation. Incredible. Luis Robert to the plate. He gets one up in the zone. He goes the opposite field. That one will carry into the bullpen sports grill. Wow. Home run number three for Luis Robert in the playoffs. In a big uh, six-run inning here for the uh, Chicago White Sox. A five-run inning, I should say. And they take the two-run lead. Do we have some late game magic once again? Here is Rafael Devers to the plate now in the seventh inning, and he goes up the middle. He has a fantastic start to this inning as it brings up KFC to the plate now. One for three. He gets one inside. It will hit one hard up the middle. That one might score Devers. The throw home will be in time, but the slide is better. Devers will score. It's six to five. So here we go. This is going to be Willie Adames to the plate now. And now we have runners on first and second. Taylor Trammell, who was tremendous in these situations. 3-2 pitch. Outside fastball. Ball four. 
That will bring up Kurt Zambrano. I seriously am thinking about pinch hitting for him in this situation. He hasn't been exactly the most clutch player for us, but facing his former team, maybe he has the extra juice. He hits one to third base, and it's just a ground ball, an easy one, thrown on to first, still five to six. On to the eighth inning. Runners on second and first here with the White Sox up at the plate. Hit one to the right side, and that one will score one. And the White Sox get an extra run of insurance off of the bat of Pete Alonzo. That brings up Moncada to the plate, and that one will be a ground ball to first. TJ Antone on the mound for us. Two out, seven to five game, and that one will be a slider. And, and it will be run down by Dante Wilde in left field. So on to the ninth inning now. The White Sox bring, it, bring in their closer, Garrett Crochet. He will face the heart of our lineup, 3-4-5. Rafael Devers to the plate now. Outside fastball. That one will be ball four. Good start here. That brings up Dom Thompson Williams, who has a 97-mile-an-hour fastball on the outer half. Can't keep up. KFC to the plate. Ground ball to second. This one will end it. Just like that, the White Sox win their first home game. And now in game number four, they have a chance to tie this series up at two apiece. But they get the victory here, seven to five. We had a nice little lead there in the beginning of this game, four to one. But in the fifth frame, Chicago scores five. A seven to five victory here. You got to give it up to him. Luis, Luis Robert came up with a clutch three run home run, just like Devers did in game number one. So here we are in game four. I decide to pitch Ty Macklin. They're pitching Kyle Freeland, who is a you know a journeyman lefty. But here is KFC coming through in the first inning with a three-run home run. We get four hits in the first frame, and we end up with the three-run lead. But we're not done. We put two more on in the second inning, and we're threatening to score again here in the third frame, but here we are in the third inning. And Ty Macklin, such a good sim pitcher. He gets through a couple of innings, giving up no runs, but there in the fourth, he gives up a two-run home run to Moncada. The White Sox go to the bullpen and bring in Levi Stout, but he gives up a hit here, a run here in the sixth inning, and now it's a 6-2 to two ball game. They do bring in Devin Williams, who should shut it down in the seventh. Ty Macklin still on the mound for us. And in the seventh inning, I decide to pull him. Bringing in Joel Payams, who is excellent, our best relief pitcher on the squad. He gets us out of that inning. On to the eighth inning, and that one will be a solo home run by Robert. But I decide to leave Payams in. He gets through that inning. One run given up. But on to the ninth inning. One more run of insurance from KFC, a solo home run. And we end up winning game number four, seven to three. Incredible start to the ALCS. We are now up 3-1. We have one more game on the road here in Chicago. And we'll see if we can close it out. I have no idea who's going to be starting game five. It probably won't be Adrian Hauser. Maybe it will. But I'm thinking maybe Bradley McDougal again here for game five to see if we can clinch it and return back to the World Series. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money. I got time to get it. Target on me so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in the dash and the stick is with it. And I hit the four or five on the wet side. But I'm from the east side, that's how we slide, that's how we ride, yeah, yeah, that's how we ride.